will talk about RF shadow games. Here is like a, a very generic uh, presentation uh, which will introduce you uh, all the, this, the aspect of radio and wh what we can do with uh, software definite radio. So let's, let's go. So just you know, for, to introduce myself, uh, who I am, I'm Sebastian Dudek. Um, um, I'm the founder of Plantest. So we're doing a lot of research uh, on radio trainings, also uh, hardware and software the radio tools. We're interested about SDR hardware, RFID, Wi-Fi, a lot of technologies. Uh, so radio frequency. Uh, radio frequency has a lot of history. Uh, it was like also created uh, in World War II. Uh, it was used, sorry, in World War II for radar, radio navigation, jamming, port key, and so on. But now we we doing we 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 can see it in, in a lot of aspects like uh, wireless television, mobile phones, satellites, uh, access control systems, for example. And uh, uh, today uh, we use like uh, a lot of numerics thanks to DSP, uh, which is uh, digital signal processing, uh, and also, we have to know that in each country, uh, the emission and the reception is regulated uh, by your country. So uh, if you want to, to emit or receive a signal in each country, you, you have to, uh, to have a license for that. Generally, if you, if you want to use only the reception, no, you can always juggle with the, the, the law, but uh, with the emission is uh, something else. So if you, if you attempt to, to emit, uh, just you know, uh, be uh, be aware that it's not allowed in your country. Also, radio of, uh, characteristics um, in the RF, you, we have to be aware of uh, many uh, characteristics. Uh, characteristic, sorry, as the the wavelength, the celerity of the uh, of the radio wave, the period, the frequency, which will also determine which uh, which also device I will use, which uh, antenna I will use, how far we uh, will go my my, uh, my signal. So. Uh, this is a lot of aspects to, to take in account uh, while working uh, with radio. Also, uh, to process a signal, uh, we have to represent it in time domain. So we have two main steps to, to do. It's the, first the sampling, which transform all the continuous signal to discrete time signal. Then the quantization, which yield the value discrete the binary number. Generally, is like, you know, 32-bit uh, floating number. Um, and then also when doing the sampling, uh, there is something important to, uh, to be aware of at the beginning. It's the decrease and channel uh, theory, because uh, if you don't, don't sample enough, uh, you are like, um, uh, for example, just, you know, you here, sorry, up. I'm trying to, it's, oh, sorry. I was like just trying to use that. So here in that example, it's an example when uh, the sampling, uh, the sampling, uh, the Nyquist channel uh, sampling fr frequency is respected. So we can see that the signal is uh, processed very well. But in another example, we can see that we have some aliasing, aliasing here because the Shannon frequency is not respected. And so this is the main uh, things to, to know when we, we attempt to process a signal at the beginning while using a radio. Um, also, there's a lot of tools in radio we, we, are, we, we need to, to use, like the DFT, which is the discrete Fourier transform, which allow you, uh, allows us to, uh, to know the, uh, the uh, composition of the, um, the signal and also see at which frequency uh, um, we, um, we, can, we can have the signal and uh, how, what are the harmonics that are interesting to, to study here. Um, and also in radio, um, yeah, why we, we should be interested in radio because there is a lot of targets. The, the, the targets are the following, like the access radio, uh, access controls, the mobile phones, uh, navigation systems, autonomous car, industrial systems. So, uh, radio can be very interesting to, to study because of that. Uh, because like uh, for each system, there, there's like we, we can find a lot of variability relative to if dropping, uh, replays, uh, injection, relays, jamming, DOS, and so on. So there's a lot of variability to to uh, to to find in this system. And now we know that uh, a lot of system use radio. Uh, uh, with the radio uh, system to to communicate. Uh, so 
this is a very interesting thing to know as an attacker because if you are if we are allowed to uh, to sniff a signal uh, we we are able maybe to if drop a signal replay it uh, or also inject some traffic to control uh, a target so uh, this is why it's very interesting to know also um, as a tool before we it was like very complicated to interact with a signal but now with the uh, the the SDR, the software definite radio, uh, we are able to, to do all the work uh, with uh, just a little device uh, which can be generic or specific to, uh, to, uh, to, to some frequencies. Uh, and that, that does all the, uh, the digital uh, to analog and also the analog to digital conversions, RF amplification, mixing and uh, a lot of stuff. And the rest is done in the software part that sure means that you, you do all the modulation, demodulation, and so on. So you can study a, a signal at a very low level. And there's a lot of uh, SDR devices uh, um, available in the market. Uh, here are just uh, a non-exhaustive -exhaust list here uh, where you can find um, um, some, some, you know, some SDR that can do a lot of stuff like the, DOZ, the USRP, but also cheaper ones like BDRF, BDRF2 also here. Uh, and there is also the SDR, which is also a little bit cheaper. Um, and if we, you you want to, to do some minimization with uh, you, uh, if you want to do some very uh, minimalistic device, you can also use the XTRX, which is also uh, very uh, very generic. Uh, but it's also uh, to be being ger generic it has a cost. Uh, it has a cost uh, uh, with the price, but also a cost with performance and some some generic purpose devices are not sensible enough to uh, to to be able to capture uh, signals uh, uh, at some uh, some frequencies. So this is you know something that can you know uh, can happen. Uh, also, if you want to to choose a device, uh, also just you know don't look just on the super supported frequency, which is interesting at the beginning. But also if you are allowed to to do, uh, to do the full duplexing. Uh, and also uh, look at the uh, the sampling because, uh, as I said before, sampling uh, frequency is very important uh, to to take in account uh, while doing processing of a signal. So this is another stuff to to see. Also the clock stability, and then the other stuff like the price, uh, the 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 uh, the antennas present, and also uh, something interesting for. Um, or uh, forwarding all the samples to your um, computer and uh, backward. Uh, it's all important to, to choose the right uh, bus interface because if you use, for example, the, the USB 2 bus, it's like, you know, very slow to, to, uh, to, um, uh, uh, to forward all the, the traffic uh, to, the, to the device and also to um, capture all the traffic. So generally look at all these uh, specifics uh, before choosing your one device. Then you have to choose an antenna. As, and as I said, uh, we have to take into account the characteristic of uh, our uh, radio wave, but also there's many uh, characteristics uh, you can find with antenna, the uh, usage frequency, the polarization, the directivity, the dimension and shape, power mode, and so on. So uh, everything uh, can, you know, each characteristic uh, can have an impact of you uh, uh, in your capture or wh when you want to interact with a signal. When you want to, to to do some observation in the air, uh, they are they are like very uh, very good spectrum analyzer uh, like this one, which costs a lot of a lot of money. But when you you don't have a lot of money, you prefer to use, uh, for example, uh, a cheaper a cheaper uh, device like the RF Explorer, which is like a gadget but very uh, useful uh, and also uh, also practical because you can transport it everywhere. You can just uh, Take it in in your pocket, and um, you can so do some observation. But I, yeah, no, uh, yes, I know it's you know it's it's a sort of gadget, but uh, very very useful sometimes. Then also you can so to do your um, observation using the SDR with uh, uh, GQRX and uh, also other uh, software like uh, H SDR SDR Chop and so on. Um, there's also other tools in Windows, for example here. Which is there? Is there a chop also for Windows? Um, here is also um, a very, a very good spectrum analyzer because it allows you to detect some peaks. If you are interested, if you don't know uh, where to look and uh, 
you just want to, to find some interesting frequency, you can always use this, uh, this analyzer to, to find some interesting peaks. Uh, there is also the SIG digger, which is uh, used for reverse engineering, but also for reverse engineering, we will um, uh, we'll see another tool, uh, which is very practical and, uh, and which I use uh, every time when I deal with very simple uh, modulations. Uh, generally, I use like uh, Gunner Radio, but uh, there is no, there's not only Gunner Radio, you have also Photos SDR, you have also Redog SDR, but Gunner Radio is like, you know, the, the most used um, uh, uh, software, uh, um, so software definition radio software to, to control the devices. And also you can, you know, control it with Python and or C++. Uh, in Python, you can, you can create signal in, and flow graph. Um, and also you can do it also in, uh, in C++. Uh, it has a scheduler which uh, allows you to start, stop and wait for operation. So this is, you know, uh, this is a little schema in the right on how it is composed. Uh, then if you want to create a flow graph, you can use, um, you can do it by, by the end, but I don't recommend it. So mainly I use the new radio companion, which is very practical to build all the blocks and create your flow graph and process your signal. Uh, at the beginning, you start with a source uh, block, then you, you use a sync with a FFT to, to know, to, uh, to determine which frequency is interesting, is interesting, interesting for you, sorry. And then oh, you, you, can, uh, you can do all the, the stuff uh, uh, by, you know, accusing some uh, information uh, after doing some process. When analyzing the signal, you have to determine the frequency. So you have to look at the shape also to, do, to see the modulation. Uh, and sometimes if you deal with very uh, simple modulation, you can uh, perfectly see that you are dealing with uh, AS key. Uh, or FS key uh, and other, other modulations. Sometimes the shape is complicated, so you have to go deeper by looking at the transmitter specs. So sometimes you have to see uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the chip specs uh, and also using the specs, try to uh, demodulate it, uh, demodulate the signal. But sometimes the chips also use uh, different types of modulations. So you, can, you don't know yet which kind of modulation is used. So sometimes you also do some brute forcing. You can also then use the blocks to, you need to process all the signals. And then uh, at the end, you have to decode it uh, with, uh, so uh, the signal generally also protects, uh, it's a little bit protected uh, just to check if uh, there is no error on the, on, the, on, the, on the cords and so on. So you will use like um, well, the simple one, like which is NRZ, but then uh, Manchester and so on. So there's lo a lot of also uh, of work to do on decoding and also on interpreting the signal because you have also the application layer to decode. Then, like I said before, Thomas targets uh, use uh, RF communication, attacking them uh, is very interesting because uh, you know, all the all the signals are broadcasted in the air. So all you have to do is listen, try to uh, to to find something interesting, try to demodulate, demodulate it, decode it, and then see if there's some leaks or something you can do uh, if there, there is no, uh, for example, application layer uh, encryption or, or any other things that you can play with, or if you, you can, for example, replay the signal to see what happened, if the, if the targets will uh, try to communicate with you or, or repeat the uh, same packets. So there's a lot of, 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 of plays to do. Um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, I was like, um, I was like not mentioning the tools, but um, about uh, reverse engineering, this is a, a very useful tool if you want to deal with uh, simple modulations uh, like AS key, FS key, for example. And this is practical uh, in for, for very simple modulation. Practically, you just, what you, you have to do is sometimes to just auto detect all the parameters and uh, while, uh, while, while opening a file, a capture file, and then you, you will have all the information decoded. Uh, sometimes you have also to do some manual configuration, uh, but that depends. Uh, generally, it's automatic, gener uh, generally, but sometimes you have to also to do some, you know, some manual things, and then you, you are able to decode uh, simple modulation, like AS key, FS key. So this is a very practical cool tool, but also there's like um, a very good uh, part in this. It's uh, the analysis, uh, which is not in this slide, but the analysis part, allow you to also to, uh, to assist you while decoding 
some you know, some packets. So uh, you can also do all the reverse engineering after uh, the uh, demodulation, which is quite good. Example of targets. So here we, we will see some targets uh, we have played with and uh, see so what we can do with uh, those targets. Uh, you have like, firstly, we have uh, very simple devices, so very simple, uh, that depends uh, of the of the other the devices. But uh, generally, in industrial, scientific, and medical frequency bands, you can uh, have like parameters, dual bursts, alarms, dual remotes, and a lot of stuff that, you know, sometimes, or a lot of times, then do not implement uh, a lot of uh, a lot of features to protect the signal. Uh, sometimes you have also uh, rolling codes, uh, so that depends, but generally you can, uh, easily decode uh, those signals. Uh, and this is the kind of uh, subjugate uh, device you can find, like, you know, remotes for, for garage doors, uh, power meters, uh, you know. This is like, you know, a very old technology that is commonly used, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, slowly is um, is replacing by uh, by other technologies. Uh, generally, in new uh, in new targets, you can find some some protections like rolling cords and other things, uh, which you, uh, which are used to protect the um, the messages uh, from you know from eave dropping or replaying attacks. But uh, that depends uh, also on the on the price of the device. Uh, which frequency you can find in the in those bonds? So you can find uh, those frequencies. Uh, you are maybe aware of uh, uh, those frequencies that are commonly used, but uh, there's plenty of others that, uh, that are also find uh, uh, in this uh, in this uh, category. Also, in more using the mobile network, if you if you want to play with mobile network targets, you have like a lot of targets like intercoms, delivery pickup stations, electric uh, electric counters, counters, uh, cameras, alarms, cars. Uh, so there's plenty of, of them. Uh, first, you know, let's let's see uh, the intercom that's uh, used today because now intercoms uh, are not wired. They use remote, uh, the remote communication like GSM, 3G, 4G, or Wi-Fi. So we can do a lot of stuff. Like for example, uh, for intercoms that are uh, connected to the to the mobile network, because you, uh, we can, for example. Uh, try to catch the uh, the uh, the intercom using the the handover uh, behavior, and then uh, try to uh, uh, try to uh, impersonate a resident phone to open the door and so on. So there's like a lot of uh, play to do. If you want to detect uh, those kind of intercom, you can detect it by uh, some models that are exposed uh, externally like that. And yeah, while intercepting the resident phone, you can, for example, while you are trapping the, the intercom to your network. You are able, for example, to see this interesting uh, called number that, uh, that is used by in the, the intercom to call the resident. And by impersonating this number, you are, you can, you, you are able to open the door of the, uh, of the front door uh, and uh, go to the residency. So this is the kind of thing that uh, you can do with uh, the mobile network uh, devices. Uh, including all the devices, uh, like also, uh, I, I may say, also you have alarms and so on. If you want, for example, to impersonate a number, uh, what you can use, uh, with, uh, by example, with YetBTS, it's to uh, to do this config uh, configuration, which uh, allows you to put the uh, the resident phone and associate it to you IMSI, and then you uh, within the inter with the intercom register re register to you. Um, uh, to your um, to your network and also you uh, attacker phone registered to to the network you are able to impersonate the number and then uh, open the door after uh, after uh, after uh, pushing the the button uh, that's is supposed to call the residents uh, to open the door you can also open with uh, by sending the sms's and also other messages uh, over sms's so our alarm station, how it can be, uh, how it can be like very different. Um, yeah, I was like, uh, our alarm stations, not uh, this, not uh, yeah, this slide is not good. I was like, I uh, wanted to to talk about also 3G and 4G targets. Uh, 3G and 4G, uh, 4G targets are pretty the same, uh, but uh, it uses 3G and 4G. That means that you have to do mutual notification attacks, uh, 
and that is not uh, it's very complex and not possible so uh, what you have to do is uh, mainly to break uh, the material notification by downgrading the, the signal and then you are able to to uh, trap the intercom which you use uh, 3g what is interesting important also to to know here is um, is that 3g and 4g intercom uh, but also i think for 5g and others uh, will be able uh, are able to communicate it, communicate with the intercom centralized server which means that also this server is uh, used to configure the intercoms uh, remotely so the intercom are always like uh, pulling the configuration from the server and it's also supposed to be uh, uh, managed by an administrator which can be the residents but also uh, uh, some specific ad uh, administrator uh, and that this uh, this uh, decentralized server can be managed uh, via uh, uh, via the web uh, or over uh, uh, generalized like you know a simple web interface that uh, that allows you to manage all the intercoms uh, you can manage and that you can for example uh, in that specific uh, scenario you don't need to any SDR device to, to do that you can find maybe a vulnerability on the web server and uh, target all the uh, the resident uh, the, the intercoms that are connected to this server uh, for yeah what i said for 3g and 4g targets is like uh, they use mutual notification so it's difficult to spawn a station at uh, this level so uh, it's difficult to to uh, to trap an intercom which uses 3G and 4G, so you have to downgrade it uh, using the GSM communication. How to downgrade it? Uh, it's not a simple things, but uh, you can uh, use some jamming attack, uh, like for example, uh, buying a Chinese device to do that. Very cheap. Uh, other devices uh, which are a little bit heavier and difficult to to bring with you uh, and uh, more less mobile. But uh, you can also perform that in SDR. I know that in SDR it's complicated because uh, each devices cannot jam all the, the signal in the same time, but uh, you can also proceed with uh, uh, some uh, smart jamming attack, which means that, uh, for example, I've created a tool which uh, aims to uh, map all the, uh, the, the cells, interesting cells, and then use those uh, cells uh, that I target to jam them so I just, you know, focus on specific frequency to jam. So this is like, you no, know, we, we, this is what I call smart jamming, which is like, you know, jamming uh, just, you know, at the time, uh, each frequency that uh, are used by an operator, for example. So you have also to target uh, specific operators and with one device or two device, you can jam uh, pretty easily without having to bring a very, uh, a very heavy uh, jammer with you. Uh, intercept cars is very interesting because uh, if you know, if you don't know yet, um, you have um, AVA system, which uh, allows uh, cars to uh, to do all the infotainment, um, all the stuff. Like you know, you can also play with applications. You, can, you have also Facebook, Twitter on that. And uh, while intercepting this communication, you can find interesting things because you can uh, see all the, the applications that are uh, that are. Uh, communicate uh, with servers, some servers that you are you can intercept, and uh, you can see some interesting IP calls. Uh, for example, when uh, the the IVA of the car wants to uh, upgrade the his uh, firmware, and uh, all you see here uh, is that it use also HTTP and not uh, and not uh, encrypted layer. So yeah, that can be very interesting uh, interesting if the the application layer is not encrypted uh, as well. Also, what is uh, interesting is that um, in in this industry uh, you can find a lot of interesting things like old Andres because uh, you know uh, those devices are um, are not old, but uh, it's like you know uh, for example uh, it's not that the, those devices are old, but uh, the the concepts uh, is uh, has been thinked before and uh, is maybe you can find this system from ten years ago. That are uh, still in the market, uh, and which is interesting. That's for that is that for very uh, very new cars, you can uh, you can find some old Android, and uh, by by just finding this kind of Android, you can you can just think about how much severe you can use against this Android. For example, uh, we we know that this Android is doing some request web request, so we can uh, fight uh, with. Uh, had JavaScript interface uh, interface 
a severe health to uh, to get a, re a remote code execution on that, and then attack the the, uh, the AVA uh, part of the car. You can also attack uh, for uh, uh, a mobile uh, network by using the uh, the software uh, uh, which is called the SR, uh, CRS LT, uh, which has uh, a CRS UE. Uh, which is like you know a software emulated uh, user equipment, and uh, allows you to go uh, with very uh, in low level and uh, try to find some uh, some bugs in uh, in the more by um, uh, operator uh, part. But it's like very complicated because uh, in this part you uh, if maybe if you if you're able to to crash a, a cell or I don't know uh, you are not able to debug uh, what is happening uh, in the cell part. So this is like you know, uh, at this part is interesting if you are able to debug uh, the the cell uh, you are flooding, but uh, in a lot of cases it allows you to to see what happens in a low level, but and debug it, but uh, not more. About smart grids, um, it's you know smart grids mainly avoid the issue in the past uh, about power outage. Uh, if we if we look at the history, it's also an interesting thing because uh, it uses uh, 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 an interesting, uh, interesting, uh, an interesting uh, aspect uh, of the power um, communication, um, and just it's it aims to manage all the the small scale energy production nodes, uh, and it includes a lot of targets uh, you can see uh, uh, in the wide like smart meters, smart appliance, uh, renewable energy resources, and so on. Allow um, also cars. If you want to decode the signal, it's not as easy because uh, there's a lot of process to do about the OFBM demodulation. Um, about that, what um, many have used is a specific a device that is able to uh, to be plugged. Uh, and uh, for that, if you are if you are interested, you can see the uh, the uh, proof of concepts on a V2G injector, which is um, a tool that is made to um, to uh, to penetrate a network that, that is established between a car and a charging station remotely, even uh, even uh, if you you can you can even use it in a residency that is connected to the same electric electric car network as a smart charging station, and you can use that tool to to do that. But if you want to go deeper in radio, generally you see that um, the in the power line communications. The signal is superposed. Uh, the data signal is superposed to the uh, to the power uh, power line um, uh, power line uh, uh, to the power line. Sorry. Um, so this signal you can find it in many frequency uh, between uh, one to eight and uh, thirty megahertz, and this is the kind of, uh, of things you can see. Um, uh, what we've done, uh, I have like um, an intern before when I was uh, working for Sojeti who made a, a small uh, modification on the, the PLC. And this is a, a unplugged PLC that was made, uh, that was uh, modified uh, in a way to plug an antenna. And that way we were able, for example, to with an oscilloscope to, uh, to, to, to see that some, uh, some tiny preamble of uh, unplugged uh, um, unplug uh, power line communication devices uh, could be seen like that. So we then try to process it using the same implementation as the WIME project, uh, which is called uh, the this, uh, which is the Wi-Fi uh, GNU uh, radio implementation of the Wi-Fi. Sorry, which uh, allows you to to do all the demodulation for Wi-Fi. That uh, this implementation you can also use against uh, PLC. But trying to do that with an old USA PVM, we, we didn't have a lot of success. So we try to also uh, reverse engineer the, the firmware to understand it and also to see that there's in, an interesting thing, which are the uh, SPI uh, of, the, um, of, the, of the power line communication that allows, you, allows us to, um, to inject some, uh, some codes on the, in the RAM. And then we can, for example, to do some uh, introspection. But in radio, uh, some researcher also made uh, some very good work on that by uh, using a, a, a blade RF, for example. And um, in V2G, uh, they were able, for example, to, um, to, uh, to sniff 
the, um, the home plug green fee frames that are slower than a home plug green fee uh, in, a, in a residences. But, uh, uh, but it was like a very good research because it, uh, it proved that uh, remotely uh, in the air, we, can, we are able to, uh, to, uh, to do wave dropping uh, remotely. Uh, and they also publish a tool to, uh, to do all the demobilization uh, and also to process the signal in a way to get uh, a wire shaft uh, capture, a pickup capture. About RFID, uh, if we want to go very deeper and uh, in a low level, um, it's uh, like we have to, to deal with, uh, with uh, very, very spe specific devices, but, but when you don't have specific devices, uh, that uh, will, uh, um, that allows you to uh, to capture those frequency on uh, between 125 kilohertz and uh, 13 megahertz. Uh, so you have to use a knob converter to do that, uh, and that way you are able to sniff those frequencies uh, using the uh, heterodyne. Uh, and then uh, we, we can simply demodulate uh, the signal, which is SSK uh, in, uh, in that example. Uh, so. Uh, we can always go deeper uh, with SGR. We can study every signal uh, and uh, also uh, including uh, RFID. But if we want, yeah, it's like, you know, uh, I didn't choose the, the right paper for that. But if you if you want to study the, the RFID, I also su suggest you to, to look at uh, the Proxmark, which is like a very uh, generic uh, tool that allows you to also to study other RFID aspects uh, on LF, uh, HF, and uh, tags and readers. Uh, it, allow, it implements a lot of technology also to uh, decode, demodulate, uh, and uh, to do all of the work. And also, it has like a lot of uh, tools like uh, uh, automatic search uh, for technology and also auto pound features to automatically find keys. Uh, find keys, for example, in MyFire Classic tags. So it, allow, it has a lot of features. There is like there is like a lot of uh, others uh, technology like LoRa, Bluetooth, Zigbee. So, as I said, SDR is like uh, a way to to do everything you want. Uh, we have just to 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 have uh, the the main problem is that uh, it, it takes time to to get into it. But once you you are you know once you are like uh, uh, more use of it, you are allowed you you are allowed to do everything you want. So, I suggest you to work on it it's a uh, very uh, uh, for me it's very um, very um, uh, interesting and a very interesting subject so uh, if you have any question uh, please ask and uh, I have um, I have finished for for these little presentations uh, and uh, I hope that uh, I was like uh, clear enough <laughs> about all the aspects it is difficult also to to explain all of that uh, in a small uh, in a small in a short period of time but if you have any question I'm uh, uh, you know, pretty easy available. So uh, if you have a question, please ask. And thank you very much. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, I think we already have questions coming up uh, in the chat. So yeah. uh, if you can go to the chat, uh, you will see a lot of uh, questions coming up. Yeah. So. That's weird because I don't see the. Uh, maybe I have to sp stop the sharing. Maybe better like that. Yeah. So if you open the chat window, yeah, there will be few questions Ooh. in there. Plenty of things. So, uh, hi Sebastian, thank you very much for the talk. May I ask you what kind of settings, hardware, and ha software you will recommend for exploring GSM world, please? Why not a marble jam? So yeah, uh, Bob, if you want to study uh, the GSM parts uh, precisely, uh, you don't need uh, you don't need exactly the uh, the USRP uh, uh, stuff, but you can already use the Blade RF, which is uh, quite cheaper than uh, the, than the USRP, uh, and uh, that will allow you to 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 work work on that. Uh, but uh, just uh, be aware because um, uh, maybe the bed RF uh, 2.0 uh, is not supported by yet BTS, but uh, I'm not sure right now because I have only the, the version one. But uh, if you want to study that, I recommend uh, you uh, uh, 
uh, using the the yet BTS because yet BTS with BladeRF uh, is uh, is very good to, to study all the GSM aspect. Any resource? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there is like you know. I think that uh, all the resources can be found in uh, you know a lot of websites. Uh, I think that there's a lot of tutorials. I also try to 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 get sometimes uh, to to do some resources uh, in my blog. Uh, but uh, there's yeah uh, there's there's like you know some some websites uh, like uh, SigWiki that you can use for example to to get some resources on uh, on uh, on on a lot of signals because uh, because it's like a, a library uh, with a lot of samples you can find in the air so if i recommend you to if you're not sure about um, a specific signal uh, in a specific frequency you can always look at the sigwiki uh, website but also uh, captures uh, in uh, github and other uh, tutorials but uh, yeah it's difficult to uh, to to recommend uh, one precise resource is like also uh, a great Scott gadget, which uh, has a lot of resources to um, a, a lot of introduction about uh, radio stuff. Uh, there's also my training, uh, which is like intense in four day, uh, where um, I I go through all the aspects of radio, but uh, mainly also uh, in um, in the offensive offensive part, uh, which aims to uh, to explore the targets, real targets, and how to interact with them and how to uh, attack them. So uh so yeah the, uh, there is also my my training that i promote uh sorry but uh yeah you can find pretty much a lot of resources everywhere but uh if you're not sure about uh, one signal what specific signal maybe try to you look at sigwiki for example or github or i don't know hi to meet you Richard. Relay attack, yeah. Relay attack are um, uh, attacks that, uh, when, for example, you want to, uh, you have, you are like in the mid, in the middle position. For example, you have uh, two targets, and um, what you are able to to do is to, uh, uh, with the relay attack, for example, to change, uh, to do some bit flip or change some specific aspect on the configuration uh, of the the packets that are sent. It. For example, you can try to to just you know. To swap a little bit the packet that had sent it from one client to the server, uh, or you can just relay them to uh, to, um, uh, for example, in the the scenario of uh, of chaos, for example, if you um, if you have a batch a, a tag that is supposed to open the car, you can also relay or relay the communications uh, between one uh, one interceptor and the uh, the relayer uh, that will uh, that will open the door. Uh, that that can work for 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 a lot of technology, uh, like maybe for normally for cars, but uh, that depends also on the technology because uh, uh, while I was like speaking with uh, Philip uh, uh, and, and other guys who does the training in RFID um, uh, about uh, is, is it possible to relay simply the communication between a tag uh, and um, and um, an access control? He said to me that uh, there is like also a timeout uh, that is uh, has to be respected be, uh, between the tag and the and the and the reader. So it it does not work for 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 a lot of uh, it does not work for some technologies, but uh, for other technology you can always try to do that. Uh, and uh, what's uh, for evaluation test bets uh, test bets uh, for test bets I recommend uh, that depends of the technology you want to to uh, to you to to study. If you want to study, for example, RFID, uh, I recommend you use, for example, the Proxmark, and uh, then you can you can also uh, use um, another FPGA, uh, which has also the RF uh, part uh, that allows you to to do the the, the, uh, the relay attack. Uh, but also for other technology, you can use uh, your USRP and try to relay the communications, uh, like for example, just you know using a, a source that uh, will uh, will capture the, uh, the the messages and try uh, relay them uh, with uh, another antenna, uh, which will transmit the signal to uh, to the device uh, pretty far away to, to try if the, the the relays work or not. But that depends always on the technology. See, see, wiki exactly. 
How can we go about using WiFi for, for attack on the wireless IP surveillance scam? Um, on IP uh, surveillance, survey, ah, surveillance car, uh, cam, yeah, you can you can try to uh, to fudge the the modem, the Wi-Fi modem, the Wi-Fi uh, uh, modem that is used by the device. But um, with IP surveillance cam, I recommend you uh, you maybe look at the upper uh, uh, layer uh, that uh, that allows you, for example, to spawn uh, hotspots that. Uh, or try to uh, to reach the application part because I think that maybe the application part can be more interesting than the the, the radio part. Uh, the radio part for IP surveillance cam uh, can be interesting maybe for or if you have if you can find uh, a vulnerability on the on the Wi-Fi uh, stack, but uh, also maybe try to um, to to do some uh, denial of services. But uh, I don't see any other attack like uh, like that. Maybe there are some, but uh, for me, it's like uh, mostly about trying to find vulnerability on, on the Wi-Fi stack and uh, do, do some denial, uh, denial of services. Um, thank you. So, oh, uh, like you say, there's a key, there's a key, FS key, but they can be decoded easily. Is there any technique that you can make it hard to decode without some info? Uh, can you do in by degrading uh, to GSM? Um, yeah. So I mean that ASK, FSK are you know, easily uh, can be easily decoded, but um, for those uh, those uh, modulations, uh, generally there's the the application part that can be used to encrypt the communication uh, or to protect uh, you know to protect uh, the communications uh, from confidentiality. So you can always use make use of the application part to do that, uh, but. So, to make the, the decoding um, uh, harder, uh, is, you know, it's it's kind of like you know a, a play with uh, the cat and the mouse. Uh, so uh, generally, uh, dealing with those modulations, you know, is uh, pretty easy for for someone who is um, uh, used uh, dealing with uh, those modulation and over modulation. Uh, but uh, you can always always try to complexify the the communication by by uh, using encryption and other uh, things. Uh, but in the upper layer. And uh, what uh, do, you, do I mean to degrade the GSM? What I meant is that, uh, yeah, I presented it, uh, presented it uh, very uh, quickly. Uh, degrading the communication is like uh, to jam the communication of uh, one specific frequency, for example. Uh, um, and uh, for the mobile parts, uh, if your operator use for 3G, uh, this uh, the cell which is connected, uh, which connects the, the intercom or the mobile uh, together. Uh, you can, for example, try to in, uh, to detect uh, the uh, the channels uh, that are used. Each channel uses a specific frequency, and if there is maybe two, three, four uh, around, then you can uh, just detect them and then jam them, jam them in a way to um, to to just um, to just make the the mobile. Uh, think that there is no uh, 3G or 4G cells around, and like that, uh, the uh, if the mobile is uh, can uh, can communicate uh, in GSM 3G 4G, for example, if I join grade, uh, if I uh, if I just jam 4G and 3G uh, frequencies, the the mobile will just see the GSM frequencies uh, and uh, the GSM uh, uh, cells, which means it will just look at the GSM frequencies, and then you can, uh, for example, use uh, the get BTS to uh, impersonate uh, BTS and intercept the, the communication uh, with that, uh, being the strongest uh, BTS around uh, the, uh, the target. So, uh, no, no, no. is there a particular good device for CPL sniffing, please? Um, I think that uh, the the good device, and I'm still working on it. And uh, yeah, I didn't have the time to to uh, to to do that so they, uh, uh, to release that. But uh, I'm still working on a device uh, which is like a, a, a dev kit, a CPL dev kit, which allows me to uh, to change uh, to just inject um, uh, codes and also uh, data in memory dynamically and can allow me to also uh, execute uh, what I want in the in the CPL. I think that's uh, uh, is no 
you, you have different kind of uh, sn uh, CPL uh, sniffing, uh, I mean, PLC the sniffing device. You can do that uh, with uh, BladeRF, uh, with the, uh, the tools that, uh, that, was, uh, that was presented before. Uh, or you can uh, use a dev kit, uh, but uh, we're using the dev kit, you have to do a lot of work by reverse engineering the firmware or by, uh, by trying to inject uh, some, um, some codes to be able to, uh, to do all the uh, introspection. But uh, so there's always a lot of work to do, but uh, if you want to do that in radio, you can just, you know, um, I will just publish the, the slides uh, from the, this session, this webinar session. But uh, you can uh, directly try to, to reuse the, the tool uh, that, uh, that, uh, that was uh, presented in the CPL part, in the radio CPL part. You can adapt it uh, to, uh, to uh, home plug, uh, uh, to a domestic home plug. Try to, if you, want, if you can, you, you are able to, to sniff some packets. But uh, of course, for home plug, uh, for domestic home plug, it's very difficult because um, uh, it's not like uh, it's not like um, a home plug green fee, which is like very slow and uh, uh, it's it's supposed to be green so it's uh, it is like a, a slowest uh, communication so it uses like you know very also lowest uh, frequencies but uh, but domestic home plug use higher frequencies like uh, and um, and sometimes you have also two samples uh, uh, like uh, 40 80 80 80 oh, voilà. 80 megahertz uh, of samples, so it's you know quite a lot, and uh, uh, and uh, those are, and to do that, to to sniff that, you uh, you you, ver you need you know a very expensive device to to sniff that. But for but for um, home plug green fee, generally you can use a simple BDRF or a USRP and try to uh, to uh, to sniff them. Thank you. I don't know if I was clear, but <laughs> because I have like a lot of things uh, in mind, but I'm looking to other question. Have you considered uh, what benefit you can have from applying machine learning automated data analysis from signal as it simplified speeds up and some? Yeah, uh, I think that uh, machine learning is like, you know, also maybe the future of uh, when decoding some signal. For example, if you're not able to uh, if you want to reverse engineer uh, communication, uh, even uh, if you use, for example, the the, um, uh, the URH uh, tool to decode the uh, communication, uh, sometimes there's a lot of structure you, you cannot decode, and uh, by you know doing a lot of uh, capture and uh, trying to, uh, to 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 find some interesting pattern uh, using the machine uh, machine learning can be a lot of uh, can be very interesting to do. So I consider it uh, very much uh, to do uh, all the analysis uh, work. Error uh, fingerprints. Uh, what do you mean about um, uh, fingerprints? Uh, error fingerprints. Is that uh, just like uh, is it um, uh, the messages while, while which are sent over the air or? Uh, to identify a specific device, uh, yeah, very. It's, it's very. I think that's uh, you can you you can maybe also consider machine learning uh, if you want to um, to uh, to identify some some devices over the air because like that uh, by studying just you know the communication after the the, the modulation is very uh, difficult to to do that. So yeah, I didn't try to to do all the. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I didn't try to. Um, uh, to, to do some identification uh, in devices, but uh, you can find you can maybe find fingerprints after the decoding and uh, finding some uh, some codes that are sent in the application part. But uh, like that uh, in radio, uh, there's a lot of work to do. Maybe uh, trying to to, to see uh, what uh, how the preambles are sent uh, and uh, maybe. Also, what's the symbol rate uh, which is which is used? Or there's like a lot of work to do, and without the machine uh, machine learning, I think that's it's an impossible work to do, or very uh, very com uh, very complex. Hacker enough, blatter perhaps. Uh, those yeah, the 
HackerF, uh, that depends. Uh, HackerF it's good for for many purposes, but uh, many I suggest you to to use BladeRF uh, if you want to uh, to work on very, uh, very uh, you know very complex signals uh, like for example mobile signals, uh, which uh, which is not no, is not possible to do for example for uh, for the HackerF. I will try to uh, supply my computer. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have any question? Any of our question? So? Hi. I think uh, we are running out of time uh, here. No uh, thank you, Sebastian, for the presentation and all the answers to the questions from the participants.